When you think of demon and monster slash and shoot 'em ups, images of handsome, dashing protagonists armed to the teeth with weapons specifically tailored to the needs of demon slayers, like holy water and silver swords, and twisting unpredictable maps full of dangerous obstacles and bloodthirsty creatures eager to poke a few holes into your jugular, may be what appears through your mind initially. Well, when you and your buddies are on the search for such a series, don't forget to count out a more temporary rendition of such a genre. Capcom and Ubisoft teamed up in the heyday of the PlayStation 2 to put their heads together and create a gripping, blood-soaked, epic series that has earned fans all across the world through the actions of an evil mega-corporation harnessing the power of an untold demonic force, and the two heroes who have the skills, and looks, to put an end to them. This is Devil May Cry 2, the sequel to the first installment that was originally intended to be a sequel in the Resident Evil series. New to the series? Think Castlevania in the present day that focuses more on fighting with style rather than simply mashing away at your controller. That's right, when you're up against a small army of demons from hell, it's up to you to utilize your skills as much as possible, with wall runs, dashes, jumping sword attacks, run and gun techniques, anything you can do to appear more of a flamboyant demon slayer. But to say that this made any impression on fans of the first Devil May Cry would probably be a lie. <laughs> It's the absence of the flashy and all-around badass weapons, fighting style, and various other attributes that our protagonist Dante had demonstrated so well to his starry-eyed fans. I mean, the fact that the first Devil May Cry was loosely based on the characters and actions of the all-star Capcom series Resident Evil is probably reason enough that Devil May Cry 2 was being looked at through a very large microscope. I will add to this school of thought by complaining about the boss battles. The first you'll come across is some kind of gorilla or orangutan fellow that probably escaped out of Satan's zoo. He looks scarier than he is to fight, especially since, well, you can just blast away at him from a distance while swinging your sword at the flying monkeys around you. Even if you aren't a fan of the gameplay, however, you're probably a guy if you picked this one up and perhaps one that is attracted to flashy visuals and, most importantly, this lady. It's the answer to the eternal question. What can we do to ensure player one keeps playing if he's totally burned out by running around level after level and slashing away at monsters? Oh yeah, chicks! Lucia is a fiery-haired, an overly tanned fighter who can turn into a harpy as well as Dante takes the form of a winged demon. Eat your heart out, Jin Kazama. Cutscenes are beautifully rendered for the PS2, which I can respect to this day. And man, who couldn't with those hairdos and outfits that were actually inspired by Diesel, a real clothing company that has partnered with game developers in the past to market their superior style. Devil May Cry 2 can be somewhat repetitive and perhaps not too challenging, but you've got to hand it to Capcom to give the hack and slash genre a try. Not to mention keeping it out of Resident Evil. 